Nice work by Treasurer Scott Morrison getting in his mid-year budget updates been first over the weekend, picking up headlines suggesting the government will cut $23 billion off the nation's gross debt by the end of this decade. First, gross federal government debt failed to become a thing back when Joe Hockey was shadow treasurer, it's the net debt that counts. Second, it's as much the price of iron ore, especially the high-quality Pilbara stuff mined by BHP and Rio as any government policy that's improved the budget's immediate outlook. And it's arguable that beyond iron ore, it's been much more a matter of Reserve Bank and key state government policies than what the feds have been up to. Third, there actually is no Treasury forecast that the reported debt reduction by 2020 to 21 will happen. As it spells out in the budget papers each year, Treasury forecasts for only two years. Beyond that, it issues projections which are based on the assumption that everything is going to be absolutely hunky-dory for the Australian economy as all excess capacity is absorbed over five years. You make that assumption and no wonder we are always going to turn the debt corner in a couple of years, as the accompanying CBA graph shows. And we might well be entering a Goldilocks period, but the weakness of making that assumption is why all the budget forecasts this decade of net debt reducing as a percentage of GDP have proved false. And within the immediate 18 months that are being forecast, Treasury is still making the rather brave prediction that the wages index will rise by 2.75% next financial year before assuming a jump to 3.25 and 3.5% in the two years thereafter while the unemployment rate remains at 5.25% for the next three years. Meanwhile, in the real world, Greater Sydney, the majority of New South Wales employment, has had a sub-minus 5% unemployment rate for eight months and just 3.9% in October, but the latest New South Wales wage index growth is 2.1%. Maybe the 2017-18 budget will break that seven-year record and net debt will peak at the new forecast of 19.2% of GDP next financial year. Indeed, the economic outlook for global and domestic growth with the accompanying stronger employment eventually trickling into higher wages, is the best we've had since the GFC. But since Morrison suddenly seems to like throwing around the gross debt figure to be able to claim that hefty sounding $23 billion reduction, it's worth taking a close look at this graph from the MIFO papers. It's still debt, with the attendant interest bill, rising out beyond where the eye only dreams to see and the reduced peak net debt forecast of 19.2% of GDP next year remains within a B's appendage of double the 10% that used to have shadow treasurer hockey claiming budget crisis. So it goes. That all said, the MIFO figures contain nothing to scare the business horses, at least beyond the business of universities, and add to the growing picture of broad economic health. But where the broad slight but steady fiscal improvement story gets wobbly is the idea of the small improvements being enough to fund election personal income tax cuts. 